Hello everybody, back here again for our vlog a day, and today is Saturday the 2nd, and today was a beautiful sunny day outside, no real breeze to speak of per se, and it got nice and hot, I'd say high 80s, something like that I think it got up to, um, I think it was in the like mid 50s, maybe 60% humidity, other, normally I'd be like, that's a beautiful weather, you can't ask for much better, except I was out running a marathon today, so... Got up, um, woke up at like 5 this morning and realized I did not want to be up quite that early. Trying to force myself back to bed. A little bit nervous about going out and running. Um, just not really nervous, I guess. Just kind of anticipating it, I guess. End up going up to Des Moines to run some of the trails up there. And planned on parking um, over by Gray's Lake. Kind of making a few laps there. Run downtown by the Principal Park and back out, you know, opposite direction. That Just kind of the way I'd normally have done it before. And somehow or another, I decided to park in a new location that I've never started running from. And took Bruce with me. We went up there. We parked um, over by the Sam's Club, if any of you are familiar with um, Des Moines. Uh, headed out um, basically towards Clive area there. And ran into a couple guys that on bikes that looked like they'd been around that area for a while. Asked them which way they'd recommend because there was a fork in the trail. The one guy kind of suggests I go up northern trail. The other guy suggests I take more of the southern trail closer to the river, which I definitely wanted to be closer to the river for my dog because he likes to swim in the river and cool off throughout the long, hot days, kind of hanging around running. Um, and he said there's more shade there. And I didn't know how long that trail was, so I just took off on the trail. And every time I came to a fork in the road, you kind of tell where the main trail was going, little offshoots. I took virtually every offshoot. Um, then just kind of seeing where it go. Who knows where it was going to head out. Most of them weren't very long. I'd say anywhere from a tenth to a half mile. They'd hit a road as like the entrance, the actual like get in there from like the park streets, that kind of thing from the housing areas and the community side. So beautiful trail, lots and lots of um, trees and stuff. Um, a lot of sun though still at different spots. I was pretty hot in the day as I went. Um, ended up running out. My plan was to run out about six, maybe seven miles, turn around, come back to the car, refill my hydro pack and that, and that would put me at a half marathon. If I go out, say six, you know, you know, kind of thing, got a little over six, six and a half, puts me back at the car at 13. Um, that would then basically be my half marathon. Take off the opposite direction towards Gray's Lake, run out there, you know, basically the six, six and a half, bring me back, put me at the 13, puts me at 26, and I'm good to go. Ended up, as I was running out, I just kind of felt like I liked that trail. I'd never been on it before, never seen it before. Just, it was beautiful. There was always a river right there by me, even if I wasn't able to get to it a lot of times for Bruce to swim in, because it was just like some pretty steep cliffs and stuff down to it. Uh, it's one of the ones that's pretty shallow unless it's rainy season. When it's rainy season, all the streets and the parking lots and the towns and stuff and the houses that are built up there, it floods. And you can tell where it floods quite often up there. Like there's a lot of signs out and the gates blocking the trails at almost every underpass going underneath the bridge that they close it off when it's rainy season and there's mud packed across the trail and that. So you can definitely tell that's an overflow creek as much as it is, you know, an actual creek running normally. So we took off, and like I said, just kept on running. Found a couple of water fountains. He, he'll drink out of water fountains for me, too. Splashed a bunch of water on him. Let him swim in the river, I think, probably seven different times. Um, we'd ran all the way out and back. We ran the first half marathon nonstop running. Well, I mean, he stopped to pee and poop and that kind of thing. But we didn't do any walking at all. It was just basically stop for him, getting some water every two miles. Um, I took a drink every mile. I kept running during mine. I'd stop every two miles to give him plenty of water because I knew it was going to be getting hot as I went. I wanted to keep him hydrated. And with the Great Danes, you can't give them just a ton of water at once, same as food, and then take them out running. They can actually flip their stomach, and almost all of them die from that. You can have surgery to fix it, but they never really come out of it fully, seems like. So definitely want to give him a little bit of water. Normally on like cooler days and stuff, I'll give him water every three miles or every four miles in the wintertime. But in the summer, it's every two miles. Then as the run goes on, it gets to be every mile as we go. Hit the um, the river a couple times, let him swim around in there, splash around in there. He seems to enjoy the crap out of that. Every time I got done giving a drink, I'd spray him down with water also, trying to keep sure he stayed you know cool in that. We ended up making it all out there, ran into a handful of people off and on, kind of chatting a little bit here and there. Turned around, started heading back, and everything was going good. It was actually feeling great. Um, ended up to the point he started really kind of you could tell he was starting to bonk he was really starting to get overheated in that 
end up letting him kind of cool down. We got to where we were walking the shade spots, running the sun. So we were just a little bit longer in the shade to kind of keep him cooled off, spraying a lot more water on him. Flying got back to the car, refilled the hydros, got him plenty of fluid in him again. He doesn't eat when we're out running. So from there, I headed the opposite direction. And from where I parked, there's a dog park. I don't know. I'm going to guess quarter mile, maybe half mile from there. So I headed down to the dog park. So I'm going to let him. There was dogs in there. There's hardly ever any dogs in there. This is like the second time I've ever seen dogs in there. The other time was 4th of July. So I thought I'm going to let him hang around the dogs a little bit. I knew he wasn't going to be super hyper running around. But he likes to run around smell dog stuff. And if we'd went to Gray's Lake, he would have had a lot more dogs to interact with over there and people. And he wasn't getting that today. So to reward him, we stopped in there. Uh, hung out there for about 10 minutes or so. Maybe 15. I don't know how long we were there exactly. Um, he didn't, like I said, didn't run around a lot. He smelled all the dogs. Got petted by a bunch of strangers. We headed back out on the run. Um, he drank a lot of water there. Kept stealing his little water. It was kind of funny for her dog. And she was like, we got plenty. It's fine. No big deal. We took off from there. Headed out. And... Um, I wasn't, I don't know, I was kind of feeling that weird part of where I didn't want to run, you know, all the way out because I'd already ran over half the marathon, and basically he was kind of acting funky. So we stopped by the river a couple more times, letting him cool off. I actually turned around and came back to the car a little sooner than I'd planned, actually quite a bit sooner than I'd planned. Um, headed back to the car, refilled the, um, my hydro pack and that, dumped a bunch of water on him, got him just soaked to the bone again. Took off, running the opposite direction that. Really ended up just overall... It took, I was out there for like, we stopped the dog park, went back, I forgot about that part, and then ran on out. So I stopped, kept stopping on him, playing the river and that as much as I could, stopped the car, and he jumped in the car the second time we stopped there, and the car was hot. I mean, like the sun was baking that thing, it was super cooking. There was no shade in that parking lot, and the car was probably, I'm going to guess a good 120, 125 degrees. It was super hot in that thing. Opened the doors, I reached in, grabbed the cooler, grabbed some ice water and stuff, dumped it in the pack, dumped my ice and my hydro. And I look back, and he's jumped in the car and laying there in the seat like, oh, I'm done. So I'm like, oh, shit. So I went ahead and started the car up to the air transfer on full blast. And sitting there a little bit, I thought, screw it. Drove him around a little while. We were probably, I don't know, in the car half an hour maybe, I'm going to guess. I don't know exactly how long we were in the car. We were in the car for quite a bit. Just drove him around, let him cool off. And then once I saw he wasn't panting and stuff, he got cooled down pretty good. We headed right back to the same spot, took off for the run. So my marathon that I was running for like five hours... I was out for over seven. So there's two hours of downtime. The dog parks, the rivers, letting him, stopping to, to give him water, and then running him around for half an hour in the car to cool him off. So definitely ended up being a super long day for me. I had really no intention of ever being out there seven plus hours on the trail with him. Then we got finished up, stopped by the car, grabbed some more cold water, some more tea for me, headed over to the dog park, like I said, just a quarter, half mile away. There was another gentleman there, the dog, that I passed on the way there. Um, he showed up. Him and Bruce played a little bit. Bruce mostly just went and sat in that guy's lap and got petted by a stranger, which was pretty funny. Because that guy's dog were on my lap getting petted. So it was one of those things where he had a beautiful um, labradoodle, or gold, golden doodle, where the golden retriever poodle mix. So beautiful, wonderful dog, super sweet. And kind of let Bruce just chill out there a little bit off leash, kind of have a little bit of fun. Headed back, got in the car, um, basically drove home. I was having a hard time staying awake. I was really kind of just beat from that whole thing. Got home, got my shower. Um, just out of the shower not very long ago. I'm feeling slightly, you know, refreshed from that. Legs are still tired. Um, my legs hurting like hell. I almost thought I was going to pull out at the mile one. I was literally in so much pain. It was ridiculous. But I've been kickstarting my dirt bike for really a bunch the last couple days there. And it's not been running right. It had some bad gas in it and stuff. The other day I was up at Bussy, And my leg was still... I didn't realize how sore that thing was from that. I hadn't kicked that bike that much in years. That bike usually starts up for me just so easily. And that thing was driving me crazy. Plus, I was pushing it up the hill numerous times to roll it back down the hill trying to start it. And I didn't realize how bad my leg was on fire until I ran that first mile. I was able to stop, stretch it out a couple different times. And I was able to finally suck up and get through it. I should have probably taken my ibuprofen or something like that, but I didn't think about it and didn't have any with me. It was at the car. Um, I just, I'm just i not a drug person. I hate taking ibuprofen, Tylenol, and that kind of stuff. I just try and avoid it, especially when I'm still doing the exercise because I'm afraid I'll cause myself more damage. There's a reason why your body's telling you're in pain is to slow down or do something different. So, so glad it was over. Um, just absolutely just happy as shit it was over. So I've decided I cannot take Bruce with me on a marathon again. At least not in the summer. There's just, he can't do it. That was, it was absolutely killing me seeing him out there. And there was nobody around to basically watch him. I tried calling a dog sitter that I know up there in Des Moines area. And they didn't answer. So I assumed they were out doing whatever. So they couldn't watch him either. So 
that's all I've got for right now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe and wonderful day. Thanks for watching.